topics that go all the way up to an organization's board level conversations today. For the last 15 years, organizations have been buying data protection infrastructure designed to cost optimize the cost of backups by implementing very, very aggressive data reduction through the form of deduplication. The little known fact about deduplication is that it really doesn't work on hard drive based infrastructure at all. And at a time where ransomware recovery is the number one defining characteristic of how people should think about buying backup infrastructure, we're going to take some time today to explain to you why things need to be entirely different in the age of ransomware when it comes to data protection. My name is Jeff Denworth. I'm the CMO and co-founder of Vast Data. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with us to talk about data reduction and how that works for your data protection agenda. Okay, so thinking about the different types of storage infrastructure that people can choose today to deploy data protection, data recovery systems, uh, I think it first kind of is important to set the, t the stage with respect to what is capable from a storage media perspective. And so today customers have essentially two basic options when they think about storing active data into some backup environment. One is you have a hard drive. Uh, and that gives you about, hard drive, gives you about 100 to 200 productive IOPS per storage device today. You can buy them as large as 20 terabytes or even a little bit more. SSDs on the other hand, A, you can get them bigger, um, but the important distinction here is they get about 500,000 IOPS from a modern NVMe SSD. And so you're dealing with an incomparable amount of performance as you consider the capabilities of both of these storage media. Now, what does that mean for data protection? Well, it all comes down to the block size. And the interesting thing is if you think about your average data protection system, uh, anyone that has deduplication is measured typically in terms of what the average uh, what the average block size is. So let's say in one hand you have a system that can cut data into four kilobyte chunks and implement very fine grained data reduction on your data. On the other hand, you may have a system that can cut data into one megabyte chunks. So why are these two considerations important with respect to this discussion? Well, thinking about data reduction, if you have a small block size and a large data set, then if these two blocks are the same, let's say this block A, block A, then you can just basically net out one of the blocks, create a pointer, let's call it a pointer to the, um, to the reference block, and you only have to keep one. And so backup systems typically use a cryptographic hashing function using SHA-256 based algorithms, two, five, six. Okay. So in this case, I've got a reasonably small block and I've managed to create a pointer to some duplicated data that's in a larger data set. Now let's imagine a different scenario where that data set was built of two very large blocks, each of which was a megabyte in size. So you've got your A and your A here, but there's also a number of other A, B, C, D, E, F, A, A, B, C, D, E, FA. And maybe you've got, uh, in this case, not an F, but a G between these two. And so largely all the same data expressed across two reasonably large blocks, the difference between these two byte range boundaries here. And so in this case, you'll have zero data reduction ratio between these two um, for reasons that just one byte of difference between two blocks when you use a cryptographic hash results in those blocks not being able to be deduplicated against each other. Cryptographic hashing is by definition very crash collision resistant, but that means that the hashes are really strong and you need to have exactly the same data in two blocks. And so customers that want to kind of get the benefit of deduplication, they'll try to buy systems that have small block sizes. Now, the challenge becomes when you start to store um, random data down to a hard drive, you basically deal with uh, the limits of the IOPS capability of a specific hard drive. And if I've got, let's say, a notional 100 IOPS per every hard drive at 4 kilobytes, that means you're basically at 400 kilobytes a second per each storage device. 
So you're dealing with something that's like a small fraction of what you'd see, for example, with like a USB drive. Uh, and this is your, your data store that your, your business is dependent upon with respect to recovery time. On the flip side, if you manage to store a one, beg one megabyte block uh, using a hard drive, well, you can get to uh, 100 megabytes a second. So block size is the key determinant in terms of how you get performance out of this mechanical storage media. And obviously there's a nearly a 200 X difference when you compare a small block size to a large block size dealing with IOPS constrained infrastructure. Now on the flip side, in four kilobytes times 500,000, you can do, let's say two, what is that? Two gigabytes a second from uh, an SSD. Let's, let's create that as a different color just so we can represent an SSD in terms of capacity. Uh, and roughly the same amount of performance from a, um, from a larger block size. But the point here is that regardless of the IO segment size, you're going to get a ton of throughput from this SSD as you store data down into the drive using random and small increments. And so at the end of the day, a um, heavily reducing data store can only deliver good read throughput when you respond back in the case of a ransomware event when you're dealing with NVMe infrastructure. And that's where hard drive based systems fall down. A lot of them will advertise their deduplication rates. A lot of them will advertise their write speeds, the time to back up a piece of data. Very infrequently do they ever advertise their read speeds. And the reason for that is that once the deduplication has occurred, typically this is a post-process operation, that results in the data being fragmented down to a hard drive that you can't read from nearly at all with any amount of performance. And so that's where we come in. Vast Data has built a new type of systems architecture. We call this DAIS, stands for Disaggregated Shared Everything. Imagine a series of stateless storage containers that run our software, present data through standard NAS, as well as S3 interfaces. And these containers all have shared access to a pool of NVMe devices over a next generation storage fabric called NVMe over fabrics. On the other side of this fabric is a bunch of SSDs that equally talk to all of the containers over this next generation storage protocol, such that every container shares access to all of the state without having to communicate to any other container. And it's not just um, state of the storage system with respect to your backup data, it's also metadata. So data plus metadata live in NVMe and every single container gets shared access to that. And that includes the data reduction in index that we maintain in NVMe media on the other side of this network. And so now we've broken from a lot of the kind of conventional backup architectures that would otherwise need to mirror their data, their, uh, um, their deduplication indexes in CPUs within the controllers. And in our case, our index is shared among dozens to thousands of controllers that are all stateless built of standard Linux containers. And so with this architecture, you get to a system that can scale to exabytes of capacity, gives you terabytes a second of performance at scale, gives you millions of IOPS of performance at scale. But the most interesting thing is we can implement a series of next generation efficiency algorithms, all with the intention of bringing the delivered cost per gigabyte far underneath what customers would spend for hard drive based infrastructure. And there's probably no application that's better to realize the benefits of what we've created than data protection and data recovery. And so the way that our architecture works from a data reduction perspective, it's not deduplication, it's not compression, but it's a new form of data reduction that we call similarity. And so imagine those, those blocks that we were talking about earlier, let's say one, two, A, B, one, two, B, C, and one, two, C, D. Okay, so you have some common data, but also some non-common data amongst these blocks. How do you deal with that uh, from a systems perspective? Well, in our case, what we're doing is we're running a fingerprint on each of these blocks to determine its relative distance to all of the other blocks within the cluster. It's not a cryptographic hash like a classic backup appliance would use, but it's a new type of hashing function that looks more similar to what you'd find in a search engine, where we're basically answering the question about what you have, and as well as other information that is kind of similar to what you're looking for. And once we find 
that two blocks or more express close enough similarity, what we do is we start to group them together in what we call a similarity cluster. And every new block that expresses enough similarity to the blocks that are already in that similarity cluster gets entered into the cluster. And then ultimately what we have to do is compress these blocks together using a new compression algorithm that comes from Facebook called Z standard. And so I like to think about this as global compression. And this global compression algorithm just enables us to go and store the deltas that we didn't otherwise store in the reference block and then create pointers back to the system in terms of being able to reconstitute data. And the great thing is that we're doing it on top of very, very low cost NVMe infrastructure that provides real time access, even though we've implemented extremely fine grained forms of data reduction. So the cool thing is, even if you're using our product as um, the back end of any kind of leading enterprise backup software that you may be working with, and today we have support uh, for products such as Veeam and Commvault and Spectrum Protect, Veritas Net Backup, and we also work with newer products such as Model 9 from a mainframe backup perspective, Rubrik and Cohesity as a target. Um, in all of these cases, they have some form of data reduction. So let's say in the case of Commvault, you see something in the order of five to one data reduction on average. Uh, in our case, as that data gets stored into the system, pre-reduced, pre-compressed, pre-deduplicated, customers will on average see an additional two to one to three to one data reduction on that data on the vast side. So let's say that's vast. Now what comes of this is a compounding amount of data reduction when you put the two together. And so regardless of what your backup state looks like, because we've got these new fine-grained mechanisms that we use to find patterns within data far more, more granularly than conventional data protection data reduction mechanisms that you'd find in classic data protection systems, well, what happens is these two compounds. So that's between 10 to one to 15 to one data reduction that you've now achieved within your data protection environment on a platform that provides you real-time recovery at any speed to protect yourself and re instantaneously recover from a ransomware attack. And so, as I mentioned, this is a platform that basically becomes just the basis for all of your modern data protection software. We'd like to think about it as a big cloud of flash that you can implement that helps you basically back up at any speed, recover at any speed without the legacy kind of legacy system all flash tax that people have otherwise expected they needed to pay. What comes of it is a system that is roughly 50 times faster from a recovery perspective than conventional purpose-built backup appliances, costs you less than half of what you'd spend for hard drive-based infrastructure, and can scale infinitely with your data protection needs. There's a lot that goes into the story, and we invite you to learn more. So visit us at www.vastdata.com, and if you want to talk to us, just hit the chat button and start a conversation today. Thanks for your time.